CompTIA A plus Core 1, 220 1101, Practice Exam. Questions 196 through 200. This video is part of our practice exam video series and is filled with questions that closely resemble the real exam. So, are you prepared to test your knowledge? Great, let's begin. Question 196. A technician is working on a projector that isn't displaying images, despite confirming that the source device and cable are functioning correctly. What is the next step the technician should take in diagnosing and resolving the issue with the projector? The answer is B. Replace the bulb. The bulb is the source of light that projects the image. If the source device and cable are working correctly, but no image is displayed, it suggests that the issue may be with the projector's ability to project the image, often due to a burnt-out or malfunctioning bulb. Since the bulb is required for image projection, replacing it can resolve issues where the projector fails to display any images. Question 197. A technician receives a complaint from a user suspecting a virus infection on their computer. What should be the first step taken by the technician to address this concern? The answer is C. Gather information about the symptoms the user is experiencing. Gathering information is the first step in the troubleshooting process because it helps the technician accurately diagnose the issue. Just as a doctor would assess symptoms before treatment, a technician should understand the computer's behavior to identify the virus and determine the most appropriate course of action. This information can reveal the severity of the infection and guide the technician to either proceed with remediation or take other protective measures, such as backing up data or running specialized antivirus scans. Question 198. If a person has misplaced their wallet with all their cards and needs an alternative way to make purchases, what smartphone technology could enable them to continue with transactions? The answer is D, NFC. NFC stands for Near Field Communication, which is the technology that enables smartphones to communicate with payment terminals to conduct transactions wirelessly. This feature allows users to make purchases without the need for physical credit or debit cards, offering a convenient alternative when such cards are unavailable, lost, or forgotten. NFC technology is widely used in various payment apps and mobile wallets for contactless payments. Question 199. A customer is looking to pair an external keyboard with their Android tablet and is considering the suitable types of connections to achieve this. Out of the available options, which would be able to accomplish this task? Select 2. The answer is C and D, Bluetooth and USB-C. Bluetooth allows for wireless connectivity, which is commonly supported by both Android tablets and external keyboards, facilitating easy and convenient pairing. As for USB-C, it is a modern, versatile port that supports data and power delivery. Many Android tablets and external keyboards have USB-C ports, allowing for a wired connection if desired. These two methods provide flexible and widely compatible ways to connect an external keyboard to an Android tablet. Question 200. A web developer wants to test a website's functionality across various browsers and versions without installing each one on their single computer. Which of the following approaches would be the most efficient way to accomplish this? The answer is B. Utilize application virtualization. Application virtualization would allow the web developer to create separate instances of various browsers and their versions within a single machine environment. This technology simulates the different browsers without the need for multiple physical installations 
enabling the developer to test web functionalities in a controlled virtualized space. It eliminates the need for additional hardware and provides a flexible, scalable testing environment. Wow, you have completed 200 questions. How about one more question as a reward for your hard work? Question 201. Which of the following standard ports on a firewall should be open to allow a successful RDP connection? The answer is D, 3389. To facilitate a remote desktop protocol, or RDP connection, port 3389 must be open on the firewall. This specific port is reserved for RDP traffic, which is necessary for remote control of computers. Opening this port is a prerequisite for initiating and maintaining an RDP session between two computers over a network. Congratulations on reaching the end of our CompTIA A plus Core 1 practice exam. Your commitment and determination are truly commendable. Now that you've completed this important step in your study process, you are that much closer to acquiring your certification. Your next step is to sign up for the official certification exam. But remember, while you've achieved so much already, there's no harm in some last-minute reinforcement. With us, you always have the freedom to dive back into our free training videos or give our practice exam another shot. That way you can ensure you're more than ready. And always remember that we are here cheering you on, eager to witness your next big achievement. So, best of luck. We're rooting for you. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more great content.